Alright, so as you were saying, um, we're moving on from the pistol disarm and we're going to talk a little bit about knife. We like to use these little plastic knives um, and just throw some either medical tape or duct tape on them because the tendency is, even with this fucking super plastic knife, even though um, it's plastic serrations on it, tend to still cut guys up a little bit when we train and when we really get to move it. Um, so we use this and we use this small knife because um, guys, what do they carry in their pocket, right? A little tactical folder, generally, or even screwdriver, prison shank, whatever. So we like to get used to training with these instead of these, because this is unrealistic unless you're fighting a Taliban or something, right? So that's why we use this small one. Now, um, what do we typically see with knife attacks? Not this, right? Not this. I mean, we sometimes, but generally what it is is this, right? The knife is felt and not seen, as all the knife gurus say. It's felt, it's not seen. Um, they'll try to kick in the gut. They'll try to pull you down into it for a number of reasons. One of the reasons being when you stab and you also pull down, the pressure in the body changes and it's, it messes you up more. So that's why you see this a lot and then rah, 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 right? They just get you and get you and get you. So what we do about that, and we've done other videos on this, but I'm kind of reiterating here. We stop the elbow. We stop the wrist. We stop the elbow. Now when Kyle inevitably tries to pull back from this, we get the elbow here and we don't let him pull back. He's gonna try to pull back, he can't, so he's gonna wanna pull in, right? Go, go uh, push it, right? Now we here, all right? Now he's gonna try to get my neck probably, something like that, top of my head, and really pull me into it, right? So we're prepared for that. And we wanna really brace up straight elbows, right? Temporarily, we're safe. Temporarily, we're safe. But we can't stay here. Kyle tried to pull me in. Right, so we're here. So we have to do something. Whether that is coming with a two-on-one grip here and pulling down, we could do the Krav Maga thing where we underhook the knee, coming through the chin jab, something like that. Another knee, push him down. Um, there's a million ways to bake a kick, right? Or whether that's the here, we come in here, maybe we um, what's that arm drag, maybe we arm drag. Then you kind of like do like a silly break. These things never fucking work. But whatever, like we wrestle for it, right? Maybe we try to bring it down here. As I said, as I will always say, your wrestling skills will save your life in a vicious dog fight like this. Um, yes, there are techniques we can use with taking a knife like the fingertip grip. I was training with a guy yesterday who had zero experience, but very athletic. And I couldn't freaking get the fingertip grip to work no matter what I did. So, which is why I'm a big fan of biting. And I know that we've talked about this on this channel before, but for you guys um, here in the background, would you rather bite somebody, risk a communicable disease, go to the hospital, get treated, they'll give you whatever you need to clear that disease. Even fucking AIDS is treatable these days, right? Um, your mouth lining, your stuff in your mouth, even if you get blood in your mouth, there is a barrier there. I'm not a doctor, by the way, but from what I hear, um, it's not as much of a risk for a communicable disease unless you have lesions in your mouth, right? So if you have open wounds in your mouth, which maybe you do from getting hit, right? But either case, would you rather risk that, bite the knife out of his fucking hands, live to see another day, get treated, or would you rather get your fucking liver stuck in and die right there on the street. I, I think it's I think it's an obvious choice. So that's why, like, maybe we're in, we're fighting, he's punching me in the face, I, I bite, ah, then I wrestle it away, right? Maybe then I'm able to cut and punch and stab at the same time, right? Um, and again, maybe when I cut, I punch and stab, I punch into him, and I literally just push and I try to fucking sever that head off. Like, it's a vicious fight. It's not, it's not, the time for fair fighting is over. Like, you took a knife off him, like, if you need, if you really can prove in the court of law that you needed to, like, do what you need to did, whatever, like, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not telling you to do anything, I'm just saying. So that's, that's really the principle that we work for here at Gunner Fighting Secrets, is stop the elbow, stop the wrist, right? Okay, now from there, we can do whatever secondary position we want. Maybe we simply knee, or maybe we simply, yeah, and then we try, arm drag, whatever. Um, I can't tell you how to finish the fight. I can simply tell you that the principle that we like to start from 
is stop the elbow and stop the wrist. Now again, if he's coming at us from the side position up here, that's something else. Maybe we come with a two on one here. Again, we're stopping the elbow, stopping the wrist. We're prepared for secondary and tertiary combat, punch me in the face. I'm gonna get fucking cracked, right? I'm coming up here, but again, now it's a fucking, saying the F word, damn it. Now it's a freaking wrestling match, right? Now I'm coming here, I've got my overhook on him. Maybe I start lacing him with knees to start. Then I start, maybe I, you know, circle around something and something, something, right? But that's our whole thing. Stop the wrist, stop the elbow. That's what we like to work with. So train it, um, train it with your partner. Work on your wrestling first and foremost. And um, stop the wrist, stop the elbow. Until next time, you are your first and last line of defense. We're going to get to training. I highly recommend that you do too. Cheers, guys.